Hello, everyone. Um, okay, let's get started. So, welcome to the uh, uh, session on PCI endpoint uh, subsystem open items discussion. So, myself, Manivan and Sadasivam, I work as a senior kernel engineer at the uh, Qualcomm learning team of Linaro. And um, that's also Kishon. Uh, Kishon works for TI, and we are both going to discuss a uh, couple of topics. Um, that's uh, for improving the PCI endpoint framework in Linux kernel. So uh, the topic that I'm going to uh, talk about is uh, reworking the PCI endpoint notification and device integration. So um, the first one is uh, reworking the existing PCI endpoint notification. So uh, the, currently the PCI endpoint framework uses atomic notifiers for passing the events from uh, endpoint controller to endpoint function driver. So um, the um, endpoint controller driver is nothing but the device driver for uh, the actual PCI controller. And the endpoint function driver is the uh, driver that uh, constitutes the actual function of the endpoint device. So let's say if you have the uh, uh, modem PCI uh, device, then uh, the endpoint function driver is the one um, doing the actual uh, data transfer of the, uh, de you know, the uh, modem packets uh, from the endpoint to the uh, host and then uh, it handles all the uh, connections with the PCI host as well. So the endpoint controller and the endpoint function needs to talk to each other, um, pass some events. And for that, uh, the endpoint framework currently uses the atomic notifier mechanism. And uh, there are a couple of events supported. First one is port init that's used for signaling the complete initialization of the endpoint controller. And uh, the second one is link up, and that's the standard PCI link up event. So the use of atomic notifiers suffers from several issues currently. So the first one is uh, the endpoint function notification or the EP of notification function should be in the atomic context. So the, even though the endpoint controller that's invoking the atomic notifier may not be in the actual, may not be in the atomic context, the um, EPF drivers needs to be in the atomic context for you know carrying out the notification. So uh, this is this is adding an overhead to the EPF uh, drivers because there is no need for uh, the actual atomic context in this case, and uh, that means the uh, EPF uh, notification function cannot use any uh, functions that can potentially sleep, and the present EPF drivers available in mainline. Uh, the endpoint uh, test function is actually uh, one of those, and it is suffering from the sleeping in atomic bug because it tries to use it tries to call the EPC functions, um, and uh, that was that were using mutex, and uh, so that triggers the sleeping in atomic bug, and this is something not we want. And the second issue is that uh, the notifiers are not a really good candidate for passing the events if we if that is a you know, concrete fixed interface between the sender and receiver. So this is something Rob Ring pointed out uh, while reviewing um, one of the endpoint framework patches. So uh, I would like to address both of these issues uh, with my proposal. So the proposal has already been submitted to the mailing list and they're being reviewed. So it uses a simple callback mechanism for uh, passing the events from EC to EPC to EPF. Um, so the EPC core will expose the event ops uh, structure and this structure has a couple of function pointers uh, one is core init and another one is link up so these are essentially for the uh, notification uh, events that were uh, in the atomic notifier so uh, the endpoint function drivers should just really pass relevant functions to these callbacks and um, on the occurrence of the event the epc core will just execute these callbacks for each of the epf drivers associated with the epc because for each EPC, there can be multiple EPF drivers, right? Because uh, the endpoint function uh, device can, you know, um, it can be, it is a multifunction device, right? So it can, um, it can expose uh, multiple uh, endpoint functions. So for each function driver, the endpoint core, uh, EPC core will just go over the uh, list of uh, callbacks. And if the callbacks is populated, it will just call it. So it's pretty simple, it works and uh, it, really gets rid of the overhead associated with the atomic notifier. And it also preserves the context of uh, context between the EPC and EPF. 
So if the EPC uh, driver that's invoking the callback is in a non-atomic context, then the EPF uh, atomic and the EPF uh, function can also be in the same context. So the context is completely preserved. So this is one proposal. And then the second issue is device to integration. So, uh, so yeah. Manivan, I have like one question. So uh, so here on the for the callbacks itself, uh, you are using mutex uh, locks. Uh, right, so yep. that could be that could possibly be events which has to be invoked in an interrupt context. For instance, the link up is is usually an interrupt that is raised by the controller. Um, so, so, so in general, when it was actually introduced um, to to just have this notifier, so it is up to the function drivers to kind of like decide whether it has to you know schedule a work and do it um, as part of a process context or it has to do it in the interrupt context itself. So the problem with uh, scheduling, I mean, using another schedule inside the EPF driver is that uh, that introduces latency. So for instance, uh, uh, you know, that is a, uh, let's say that is a core init event, and then um, we'll have the uh, link up event afterwards. And uh, if we are scheduling one more, uh, you know, the one more function or one more uh, uh, mechanism inside the EPF driver means that's adding, again, it's introducing some other overhead that, that, that we could avoid with this thing. And uh, regarding your mutex, um, that you were right that uh, we cannot use interrupt. Uh, or the EPC func caller cannot be in interrupt context, but uh, none of the EPC controller drivers are actually invoking these callbacks in the interrupt context right now. So if you go look into the up, uh, upstream drivers, only Tegra and then uh, Qualcomm PCA controllers are uh, invoking these callbacks, and both are using the threaded IRQ uh, um, for uh, this thing. So uh, Mutex just works. And um, I think uh, most of the controller drivers need not, uh, you know, call, use, I mean, issue these callbacks in the interrupt uh, handler, right? So uh, then, uh, they, then we do not know how long the endpoint function is going to take. And that's really not something want, we really want to do in the IAQ handler, right? So. Uh, so, uh, so here we have like a couple of handlers now, uh, but this is going to extend as we implement uh, more endpoint uh, functionality. Could yeah. be like function level reset, um, you know, there are like, I mean, it's just, you know, we are just, you know, uh, just on the tip of the iceberg, right? There is, yeah. there is still a lot of features that could be implemented. Um, so if, um, so if we start with this approach, then we really don't um, get into an option of both, um, you know, uh, so, so it means the the function drivers will never can be in, can never be in like an interrupt context itself. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's what that, I, um, I mean. That's what I said, right? So if you are invoking these callbacks from uh, the EPC driver, then um, you will not know how much time the EPF driver is going to take, right? So uh, we are not, we do not want to block the IRQ handler for a long period of time. So I don't see actually a reason or a point in uh, making the you know, the EPF uh, callbacks atomic. So I got the point that uh, the notification has to happen very quickly. So we do not want to add any latency. So in that context, the previous use of atomic notifiers makes made sense. But still, uh, if you use this simple callback mechanism, this, that can be actually achieved and uh, it's really more efficient instead of going through a separate framework, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there are uh, other notification, I mean, uh, the uh, notifications um, that I'm going to propose, at least for uh, link down and BME uh, events. And um, I have the uh, uh, endpoint function driver for the MHI use case that I'm going to uh, uh, talk later. And uh, that uses both of these events. Uh, so we have at least four events working in our downstream uh, driver right now. And uh, that's uh, just works fine. So. Uh, Okay, so the next topic is device tree integration. Um, so currently the device tree is well integrated with the EPC drivers, 
because uh, most of the EPC uh, or the endpoint controllers are defined in the uh, device tree, um, like any traditional uh, PCI controller IP. And uh, that works well. The EPC drivers can um, you know, make use of the uh, platform data, and then they can extract all the information like uh, register IRQ from the device tree. But currently, there is no device integration for endpoint function drivers. Um, just because most of the endpoint function drivers we, ca we have seen so far is uh, actually a software implementation. So since device tree is supposed to define only the hardware interfaces, um, e I mean, uh, it's not really a better, it's, it doesn't make made sense so far to use uh, device tree for EPF, but uh, we have started seeing some of the uh, um, functions, endpoint functions like uh, in this case, MHI, uh, MHI stands for modem host interface. Um, so that's the Qualcomm specific protocol for transferring the data packets, um, most probably the modem or uh, Wi-Fi packets from uh, PCA endpoint to host. And uh, for this endpoint function, that is really a hardware block inside the SOC. So in those cases, it, it has a specific register uh, region that is usually exposed as a bar to the PCA host. And then we have the interrupts for this block as well. So if we don't have the device tree integration, then um, currently we are, uh, you know, in the downstream implementation, we are reusing the PCI endpoint controller device tree node for, you know, getting all the um, platform uh, specific data like bar region interrupts, etc. But uh, to represent this uh, APF driver in a proper way, I would like to propose a minimal device tree integration for at least for this uh, specific endpoint function driver. We cannot make it as a generic device tree integration because as I said, most of the endpoint functions are really software implementation, just like how we have the USB gadget. Um, so uh, just for this specific use case, I would like to have the uh, device tree node defined. Um, so the proposal I am uh, have is that uh, a child node, um, so a child node for the MHI uh, under the uh, actual EPC uh, node. So this is the PCI endpoint controller IP. And we, it's, uh, the MHI node is actually a child node of uh, this EPC. And then we have the rich property. So since we have, we can have multiple um, endpoint functions inside the endpoint. So we need to have this uh, register and then the uh, unit address. And then we have the function name. So this actually going to bind with the uh, EPF driver and uh, the bar regions so we can have multiple bars so this is actually a tuple and um, we can have interrupts so this interrupts corresponds to the mhi block inside the soc so not only using this device integration um, you know, allows the epf driver to extract the uh, platform specific data it also avoids the overhead of using the uh, config fs interface for uh, you know, the linking EPC and EPF and then uh, starting the controller, etc. So currently, uh, since there is no device tree integration, um, the actual configuration of uh, the endpoint framework happens through config FS. And, uh, but uh, for config FS, we need to have the user space up and running. And uh, if you are deploying, um, let's say this uh, MHI in a real product, then, uh, we want the product to start as soon as possible, right? In the uh, during the kernel boot itself, and um, if you want to wait till the user space starts, then that, that adds some sort of latency, and that's not really user wants. And uh, in this case, since you are going to have the uh, device integration anyway, um, you know, uh, we can have a steady link between the EPC and EPF because of this parent-child hierarchy, and then uh, that really helps in configuring the uh, uh, or setting up the link between EPC and EPF without the config FS intervention. And uh, so these are the uh, two advantages of using uh, device integration for MHI function. That's it. Um, so, uh, so this one is, uh, is still in work in progress, correct? You don't have? Yes, I don't, okay. I haven't proposed anything so far. Uh, okay. In the, patch, in the form of patch series. Okay, so sometime back, actually, when I had added a non-transparent bridge function using uh, the PCI endpoint framework, 
so the so I had like used slightly different binding. Um, so so here the PCI EP will be the platform bus will come under the platform bus and your funk is actually a child of that. Um, but at least for my use case that wasn't sufficient because it has to deal with two different endpoint controllers. So kind of like defined a separate EPF bus uh, on which I had added all these functions. So uh, so the so the difference is actually so instead of having um, a child to the parent endpoint controller, kind of like had a p handle to the endpoint controller. Uh, so that way I was able to kind of like uh, give a reference to multiple endpoint controllers for a, a single function. So uh, yeah. in this case, sure. we don't really we need have a, We have a question in the room. Oh, um, sorry, yeah. Hey, uh, sorry. Manivan, and maybe you can finish answering uh, Kishan's and then I'll kind of come at it. I had a similar question sure. on what the parent-child relationship is going to be between the yeah. function and the actual device. So for example, your modem device, it's going to yeah. be sitting on the PCI bus that's going to get auto-detected. How are you going to tie the controller, the modem, and the function together in hierarchy? Sure. Um, yeah, I'll just answer uh, Kishan and then get back to you. Yeah. Um, so I did look into your uh, previous proposal for the NTBs. And um, like you said, you need to have, uh, you know, your function needs to address at least two endpoint controllers, right? So in this case, we don't need, we, we don't actually have a need for that. And uh, at least I envision we, we might end up having one more function, uh, but that's uh, entirely possible with this model. And then um, you have used the uh, a specific platform bus for instantiating this device. But uh, in that case, that cannot be really represented in a device tree, right? Because that's really a software layer um, that cannot be represented in device tree. So what I did was, uh, since the PCI endpoint is actually a physical IP, and then uh, that thing is going to get instantiate these devices or create these EPF devices. Um, so whenever, um, I don't have the proposal right now, but uh, what I envision is that uh, uh, the uh, this EPC controller driver is going to uh, create uh, these EPF devices. And uh, so for, for whatever child node uh, defined in the device tree. So it will just go through the list of uh, child nodes defined uh, in the EPC node, depend on the EPC node, and then it's it will just go and start creating functions for each of the uh, nodes, right? So, uh, and then later on, uh, when the actual uh, EPF driver shows up, it's going to bind together with uh, this guy, and then uh, they are both going to flew together. But the only question I have in mind is that, when do we actually need to start the controller? So that thing I haven't really settled on. Um, either once we bind both EPF device and then the EPF driver, uh, can we start the endpoint controller? Or uh, if you have any some other idea in mind, that would be good too. Uh, yeah, so especially in, in your case where you don't have, I mean, you are like binding all the functions as part of device tree itself. Um, then as part of, you know, creating a function devices, once you have like created function devices and invoked uh, like the probe of that function, uh, drivers, then you could actually start. Unlike, uh, so so if you confine your case uh, to where you dip, you kind of like represent all the function devices in the device tree itself, I think I don't think that's not an issue. The only issue is if you kind of like have some things represented in device tree and some things you have to uh, like in a more flexible uh, endpoint controller, which actually lets you do all that. Um, so only in that case. So the, so the only constraint is you have to start the endpoint controller only after, you know, like all your endpoint uh, function devices have been like configured. Um, so or else, you, or else the host would see some undesired results. Yeah. Uh, so as long as you confine your problem to just that, I think um, it's possible for you to just start the endpoint controller uh, as soon as you kind of like probed all your function devices. Okay. Itself. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I get back to the other question? Yeah, sure. 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 Uh, 
Okay, can you please reiterate that? Um, I cannot understand. Um, okay, okay. It looks like my mic is working. Um, to just to restate my question. Um, by the way, I'm nowhere close to a PC expert, so please correct me if I'm wrong, completely wrong. Um, but in terms of the my understanding, the modem is going to be a PCI device that's kind of scanned by the controller and populated. And you're saying this function is going to be a function of that modem in this example. So shouldn't yeah. this really be if this was like a child of the modem? And if so, how are you going to tie this function to the particular PCI device? Like, how do you know that this right, is given right. by the yeah. sort of some other random device in the PCI bus? Yeah. But this is actually a representation of the uh, actual yeah. endpoint device. There's no host in here. So uh, this is the device tree node or device entire device tree for the uh, end, endpoint uh, you know, device, right? So uh, this is how we represent the endpoint device inside the endpoint. So uh, there's nothing host specific here. So once this is completely tied, then this whole thing is going to show up in to the host as a actual PCI device. So uh, you, you cannot really separate, uh, you know, these two PCI things. Device. Device. This function. Sorry, go on. Yeah. So yeah. this function so is what making up the whole. Up the whole uh, whole uh, PCI endpoint device, PCA right? Endpoint device, right, right. So this whole so things are just represented as a single uh, PCI device with the uh, defined uh, VADP ID uh, to the host. Okay, uh, so you're saying there'll be a PCI device that corresponds to this, but I think you also mentioned like an EPF device or EFP device in the slides that'll correspond that's to the, this uh, too. Yeah, there was that's one the chat or? Yeah, so that's the yeah. virtual device we are talking about, not the not the physical yeah. device. The EPF device yeah. is a you know the yeah. internal kernel device created yeah. for each of the function, um, because the actual endpoint framework is actually a bus inside the uh, kernel. So we need to have a device, virtual device, and then we need to have a driver that gets bind to it. So uh, this thing is going to get. I mean, have a virtual device created for it, and then we'll have the actual PCA endpoint function driver that binds to it, and these both will work together to form a complete uh, PCA device. And like, what would be the parent of that function? What would be the parent of the virtual device? What so device would be the going parent? To controller. Controller. Shouldn't it really be the the virtual device that corresponds to the modem, or are you saying there's no device for the modem? If I understand correctly, we'll scan no, and you'll we'll no introduce for the modem. Because the the thing you are talking about is completely different. You are talking about from the host per perspective. So whenever you are attaching a PCI device to the host, then uh, you'll have a device showing up, and then uh, so that will have a separate in kernel device, right? That's a different thing. So this thing is only a endpoint representation. I think that's where the confusion right, but lies. The point is, if this endpoint is being supplied by that other device. Shouldn't you set up the parent of Zen point to be that other device? No, you cannot really do that. So because this is the EPC device, as per the endpoint framework, you need no, to have the EPC. Yeah. yeah. Just to be clear, I'm not mixing up the virtual device and physical device, fully understand it. Yeah. I'm also not yeah. mixing up the buses. A device in one bus can be a parent of a device in another bus. The reason I'm talking about the hierarchy and whatnot is my real question comes down to if you're having multiple devices, PCI devices on the PCI bus, and you're having multiple functions under the controller, how would you try tie the function to a particular PCI device? So I'm just making up, right? Let's other PCI device be like a GPU in the yeah. PCI yeah, yeah. bus. Yeah. So probably- yeah. They'll all come to the same controller. Yeah. So, so let me try and answer that. Uh, so if you see uh, whatever, um, uh, uh, money has presented uh, here, right? So the PCI EP here is actually a platform device, uh, right? Uh, so when this driver probes, so there are like multi, so there is like a hierarchy of devices. One is the platform device, which is part of the platform bus. Uh, so the driver actually sees this as an endpoint controller. So it it will create what is called as the EPC device, which is called the endpoint controller device. And okay. whatever you see below func, right? That is called func device, EPF function device. So all this EPF function device will be connected to the same EPC device. The EPC device itself is coming from a separate platform device, but the hierarchy is like that. So there will be leaf nodes. If you just think there will be multiple leaf nodes, EPF device, 
which is all part of this func0, func1, based on you know how many of our functions are there. And the parent of that will be the EPC device, which is you know created by the endpoint controller framework when someone adds an endpoint controller to the framework. Like for instance, here the driver that corresponds to this Qualcomm will create this EPC device when it registers with the framework. Okay, so it looks like at least in this case, you're saying all the child func devices would be uh, marked as the child of the other EPC you're talking about. Right, right, right. We're looking at the parent-child relationship in DT to figure out what function belongs to which controller. Yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. if you are having a G separate yeah. GPU device, yeah. and then if you are having a separate modem PCI device, then right. for e yeah. I mean, even for a GPU device, there needs to be a PCI controller yeah. in it, right? To talk to the PCI bus. And that will become the parent of the actual function implementing the GPU. So this same setup is yeah, going to get my device. Yeah. yeah, I thought there'd be one controller for a bus, and then you can have multiple PCI devices on the bus is what I thought. What's the oh, right interpretation? Uh, but like no, I, no, I could be wrong. No, I don't want to digress too much. Thank you. Yeah. Th so this is not a this is not root point, root, root, root complex controller driver we are talking about. So this is the endpoint uh, okay, controller driver. So, yeah, okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, so, so many like couple of points. Uh, so one is uh, so here it looks like the MHI here would always be like a function to this endpoint controller. Uh, which will be used by the host, but that could also be a case where you know any standard platform device could be exported to the remote host as an endpoint device um, based on you know so how you configure. So at least on this this Qualcomm's plat or or any of the yeah. endpoint uh, based Qualcomm platforms, we cannot really use any other functions. Yeah, yeah, uh, I has understand. To be only I one function. Yeah, 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 I understand this part. But you know a more flexible use case. If you just really think right, it could be like a, any. Let's say you could have any MMC controller, like for instance, that's present in an SOC. Uh, instead of you know connecting directly to, I mean, instead of presenting it as as a device, as a peripheral device for that Linux boot, it could actually bound as an you know endpoint function device to the endpoint controller, which could then be actually used by the remote host. Yeah. So when you actually, yeah, so probably we don't have to solve this, but when you actually define the binding uh, or when you actually think about the solution, probably this is also one of the use cases that you would have to look into. So, um, so yeah, just going by the use case, um, I don't see really a re real, real need for that because uh, the present Qualcomm devices all, you know, they have this uh, just a uh, yeah, control PCI endpoint controller and then they have this uh, MHI, and either that MHI is going to talk to the modem DSP, or it's going to talk to the uh, WLAN coprocessor for getting the modem packets. So these are the only, you know, the um, at least present use cases that I can see. Um, and I, uh, I, okay, so yeah, I agree from the Qualcomm point of view, uh, but a more generic use case, not just confining to Qualcomm, but you know, but, NXP, CIs, everywhere, right? So there is. Actually, that could actually be a use case where you have to export an actual peripheral controller controller to the remote device. Right, right. So then you are talking about a generic uh, right. device integration for the function drivers, right? Um, right. Okay, that that makes sense. So, yeah, I'll uh, think about it. Yeah. That, that seems like a key use case to me. And also, uh, in your example here, are you duplicating the addresses and interrupts that the MHI has? It's uh, it's not really a duplication. Uh, it's not present in the endpoint controller node. No, like I mean, is interrupt 440 the interrupt that the MHI node would have? Sorry, I I don't really get how the duplication comes in. Is well, let me ask another way. Is there an MHI node somewhere else in the device tree? No, 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 no. Okay, I I think it's time to wrap this discussion up. Um, we are due for the for the next talk. Maybe we can continue it in in the uh, chat.